Okay, and stop and face front, please. Stop and face front. Okay, good job. So tell me, what questions do you have? What did you learn? What do you need to know? What did you learn? Other than you're not auditory in the back. Yes. Did anyone else have trouble with one of them or two of them? All of them. <laughs> Great. I'll translate that for everybody. The word that really um, had one of the people respond was feeling. And, and that's, that's fabulous. And that's our point. You don't know until you're trained which learning style, what rep system, what avenue the five senses are pouring through in that individual. You can't know. And unless you know, you will by default make the mistake of only speaking in your own language. And that means you've got a one in four shot. Those are lousy odds. Yes. I began to feel her passion. Oh, how interesting. I'm going to repeat that. As she began to use the words of his rep system, he began to feel her passion. Another way of saying this is you can't connect. You can't share your passion unless you're doing it. Ha ha. The lights just went on in there learning style or their rep system, which is why even people that have no experience in sales whatsoever, people that have no clientele suddenly find themselves with one. See, my passion is in bringing these tools to people to empower you. Personally, I was a little annoyed at the exclusivity. I decided, Canadians, we deserve this. Why should we have to go out of the country? And part of our mission was to bring it here because it's so easy. Now, many of you who are considered charismatic may do this unconsciously. But you want to be able to do it consciously and with volition. By the way, what do you think this is going to do to your relationships at home? <laughs> Yes, because the universe has a sense of humor, by the way. <laughs> it, it does. The universe has a sense of humor. It will put you with the rep system that you usually know the least well, just so you can stretch. And then we say we want it to be about them. Well, if only they would listen to me. <laughs> and over here, I'm going to say, well, if only you would speak their language, they would listen to you. From a leadership perspective, the buck stops here. Ooh, <laughs> I said the scary thing. It's very, very, very cool, though. And really, the place that we use it the most is in our own lives. It's automatic with clients. Once you know this, this should be part of what goes into your database on your clients, so that anybody on your team that's trained can just pick up the phone and speak to the client how the client needs you to speak to them. See, in my mind, is this making sense why this is about service? It's not how I'm comfortable presenting the information, but it's about really wrapping my hands around how the client needs me to present the information. Do you know that 28% of people are currently dismissed on site in that first seven seconds? Just dismissed. Like that. So you never even get the opportunity to share your passion. And that's just what you didn't know you didn't know. So although I figured I'd do this if this is OK with you, I want to talk a little bit about why we stay stuck and how we can shift it and play a little bit more with those things. Oh, but before I do that, what else did we learn? Great question, actually. Yes. How would you, in the first seven seconds, find out where is their you know, modality, how do they communicate in the first seven seconds? 
great question. Did everyone hear the question? Is how do you know in the first seven seconds? Take the course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kathy, who is one of our graduates. You will know because there's actually a posture difference. So there's a physicality difference. There's a tonality difference. We pretty much know what someone's rep system is as they're approaching us. Over the phone, it's easy because they'll tell you. They speak in their language. And if you still don't know, as long as you rotate through those first three and your body language matches it, they'll give you the opening. They'll give you the opening. The other thing that we'll do is, once you have that opening, we'll teach you what is the conversational, just conversational language that goes deeply. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Mike. Nice hey, Mike. To nice to meet you. Mike, why are you here? Keep learning. Good. And when you're done learning, or when you keep learning, what will you be able to do differently? That spread the love of that knowledge. Excellent. And when you spread the love of that knowledge, what will that allow you to do that's different from here? Hopefully make a few extra dollars. Ah, so now I'm going to speak to that need. So, Mike, if we could show you how to spread the love and share the knowledge while you're making a few dollars, would you be interested in really wrapping your hands around some new tools? I could be if the price is right. Good. And now he's given me, now he's given me the what, and he's given me the criteria. The point is now we're having a dialogue. I and still don't know what this modality is. I do. Absolutely. Good. <laughs> but let us show you. It's very easy. And I did, I used one specific predicate. Sure. Well, I said, let's wrap. Wrap your hands around as a kinesthetic predicate. Right? And if you don't know, you're just going to use a kinesthetic, an auditory, and then a visual in that order. And he gave me his criteria. The point is, that's all it takes, folks. It's conversational. And it's about, now we're talking about Mike's real need rather than the surface need. Does everyone understand the difference? So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through a few of these slides. And I'm going to break a little early and talk about two ways for those of you who are interested in more information. Um, and I'll talk about that afterwards. This way I can just get to more techniques while we're here. And in the break, I can speak to more of you about the two, the two ways. Because one's in a leadership context, and it's just an intro weekend, but it'll give you some tem templates. And the other is actually that and or the professional training. And we'll send you to two different places to have that. So listen, listen, listen. Human beings are not motivated by what we want. We want to be motivated by what we want. But in the beginning, what we are actually motivated by is fear. And fear of the unknown. And there is something in all of psychology, you might have heard this, it's called the certainty principle. And the certainty principle says that human beings will stay miserable and familiar over happy, healthy, and wealthy, and new. It's part of our old brain. We call it the amygdala hijack. What? It's an amygdala. It's a little part that goes into fight flight. And we call it the amygdala hijack. And once the amygdala hijack happens, you're toast. You just need a timeout and you need to walk away. You need to learn how to manage that because we just said you're here to learn new skills. So now you guys tell me because you're all bright. You all are. You're here to learn new skills, but we just said that the human being will stay stuck and miserable over happy, healthy, and wealthy, and new. So what does that mean we have to do? Change, Change yes. Okay. 
Take action. Right. We have to take action. So, raise your hand if you've ever been in any seminar or any training and this is what's run through your head. All right, it makes sense to me. I wrap my hands around the concept. It sounds good, it looks good, but. Good. You've just come face to face with your own amygdala hijack. Yay! So everyone now knows what that feels like, what that looks like, and what that sounds like. So when you hear it, listen, listen, listen. Stop it! <laughs> Stop. Go, oh, that's my, that's my fight flight response because it's new. So one of the things we know as leaders is we teach others how to manage that new step. Because the amygdala is not going away, it's in your brain. There's no shutting it off. There's no, when I know enough, then I won't feel this way. Raise your hand if you've ever said it. I know I have. I can't have been the other one. The only one. That's not physically possible. 